Hello, this is Kaylee Gonzalez with MLC CAD Systems. Thank you for joining me for today's topic, which is all about SOLIDWORKS surfacing to repair and streamline part files. Now, something to keep in mind with this video, it is actually part of a three-part video series that I put together. I did this to keep each video at more of a manageable time length. We're going to be covering three separate examples inside of this three-part series. So what we're going to take a look at today is utilizing a SOLIDWORKS part file and how we can reduce the number of faces in a specific feature. The second video and second example, we're going to talk about importing a generic part file and how we can fix items such as fillets when they do not import or there's a damaged face. And then the third example is kind of like a combination of the first two. We're going to take a look at a type of fillet that maybe was not created the way we wanted and how we can make that significantly better. But this is the first video. So again, we're going to be focusing on this drill bit example and how we can reduce the number of faces in a specific feature to create a very streamlined part. As we jump into SOLIDWORKS, we can take a better look at what this part file currently looks like. Now this is a native part file, and so we have our design tree on the left, and we're going to focus on this cut sweep feature. A couple of things that we're noticing is I do have several additional faces that are not ideal for an end result. One of the first things that I typically like to do in this type of a situation is get rid of any tiny faces that we see. I'm going to go into my surfaces tab and there's an option called delete face and I'm going to choose the middle option which is delete and patch. This enables me to delete the existing face and then SOLIDWORKS is going to extend the surrounding faces to fill the gap. So as you can see the faces are then repaired and the actual edges are uniform and streamlined also. That's the first step in cleaning up any part file. The next thing that I want to do is start creating some reference planes. The reason why I'm creating reference planes here is because I'm going to use them to capture some profile sketch information that I'm going to use in a boundary surface to recreate the swept cut feature. I'm going to go ahead and utilize the existing geometry that's there because the geometry itself isn't bad. It's just I don't want all the faces. Once I have my planes, I'm going to go into a 3D sketch and I'm going to use an item called intersection curve. This is going to allow me to choose the three planes as well as the faces that intersect those planes. And I'm going to get a series of sketch splines exactly where the planes and those faces intersect. Now I'm also going to use my convert entities tool to convert the ends of this swept cut feature. The reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to use an item called fit spline. What this feature does is it's going to allow you to choose a series of splines or sketch entities. It's going to convert it into reference geometry and then fit a single spline on top of it. This is again a very simple way that we can change some of our sketches to reduce the number of faces that a feature generates. And as you can see here, I have a single spline for each of those sketch profiles. Now I'm going to go into a second 3D sketch. The reason why I'm doing this in two is simply because my sketches can get kind of cluttered. I'm going to use my convert entities to grab some of this edge information. Again, this is going to be what I'm going to use in my boundary surface. The reason why I'm converting these is because this particular spline actually needs to be segmented. SOLIDWORKS has a function for that called split entities. This will allow me to split this particular spline into two entities so that I can use the right hand portion for a profile and then I can use the fit spline and the left hand section of that split item as a type of guide curve or direction to item. Once we have this created, I'm ready that I can go ahead and exit my sketch. I'm going to show my 3D sketches and I'm ready to go into my surfaces tab and select my boundary surface. The reason why I'm zeroing in on a boundary surface in this situation 
is because the way that SOLIDWORKS calculates direction one and direction two have the same priority. That's not necessarily the case in something like a loft. So it tends to give very accurate results. And here I'm just selecting all of my profiles. So you can see how I'm capturing kind of that helical orientation of this cut. And I'm gonna use direction two, which is the edges that you see in pink. Once I go ahead and click OK, you're actually going to see that the surface is laid on top of that existing swept cut feature. So I now have a solid body, which is what I started with, and I also have a surface body. Now I'm going to hide my surface body because I'm going to use replace face. This is going to allow me to choose these three faces and then replace it with my boundary surface. And when I click OK, we can see how well that actually worked because I utilized those sketches and lined everything up. Always take a look at curvature. Now the curvature here is actually very nice. I like how this has turned out. It's symmetrical, it's uniform, it's, it doesn't have a lot of spikes in it. If we were to take a look at this before we changed it, you can see how these different faces can cause issues for downstream operations like CAM or FEA analysis. So this is definitely much better. I'm gonna finish up this part file. I'm going to go into my circular pattern tool and I'm gonna pattern the surface body so that it appears on the opposite hand side of this circular part. Now I can use cut with surface. This is going to use my surface as the basis for a cut and I can get that same geometry on the other side of my part. The last thing that I would recommend doing when utilizing steps like this is to use delete slash copy body. I like to use this to delete any additional bodies that I no longer need. It can have some performance benefits, but also the end goal is to have a single solid body that you can use. And as we can see, we have a very nice streamlined product. So this is where I'm gonna leave off on example one. I hope you found some interesting information inside of this example. Please take a look at video two and three of this series if you are curious on how I deal with fillets. Again, thank you for your time and I'll see you in video two.